welcome to DBL. We made it to the middle of the week. It is Wednesday, August 19th. I'm Tori here with Al and the gorgeous Lindsay joins us from home. The smart Lindsay as well because looks are not all that matters. Lindsay, I got none of those adjectives, but they are all <laughs> accurate about you. How are you this morning? Tori, every day you give me a compliment. I'm really flattered. I'm complimented out. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. All right, we're going to get to the second night of the Democratic convention. It took care of some business last night. The Dems formally nominated Joe Biden for presidency on day two of the convention. There he is. This came after a virtual roll call vote, which seemed to resonate surprisingly well. I fell in love with the way they did it. It featured diverse people at picturesque locations from coast to coast coast and around the world. Dr. Jill Biden delivered her speech from the high school where she used to teach English in the 90s. She said her husband has what it takes to quote bring us together and make us whole. She also taught all eight years. She was second lady. She was a full time wow. teacher as well. Meantime, social media was buzzing about Mr. President, former president, excuse me, Bill Clinton. He used his speech to attack the current president. Take a look. If you want a president who defines the job as spending hours a day watching TV and zapping people on social media, he's your man. Denying, distracting, and demeaning works great if you're trying to entertain or inflame. But in a real crisis, it collapses like a house of cards. COVID just doesn't respond to any of that. To beat it, you've got to actually go to work and deal with the facts. So a lot of people asking right now, is Bill Clinton the right man to lecture about behavior in the Oval Office? Uh, Linz, what was your first take when you saw Bill Clinton speak? I mean, he has his opinion and came out, and I appreciate them getting former presidents to speak, but I'm scared that the whole convention will turn into this thing where everybody is bashing Trump as opposed to saying, like, what the actual policies are going to be that they're going to put in place or why they're behind Joe Biden. And so I'm looking for more of that. But I know the message from both Bill Clinton and Michelle Obama was, like, facts um, over fear and things like that, and they were just consistent with the listen to the facts, listen to the scientists. And so I think that's important. Yeah, and, I, you know, Bill Clinton was one of the greatest is one of the greatest orators of our time whether you like his policies or not or his behavior in 2012 at the dnc al he gave one of the best speeches you'll ever hear but the me too movement he got five minutes and not in a headlining position other people took the stage like jack schlossberg and caroline kennedy uh that is Car uh, caroline's son and jfk's grandson and i thought they did a wonderful job connecting did you have any favorite moments al uh, i really like what colin powell had to say and i just you know i look at I, I want us to be able, and maybe this is very pie in the sky, Lindsay, Tori. Tell me if I'm just if I'm just an old fool. I did, I do like the fact that he's a Republican, a lifelong Republican, a lifelong military uh, guy, and he's still behind Joe Biden just because I, I, I would like to have some semblance of hope that one day the Democratic and Republican Party can work together in some way, and it's not seen as something that would be used against you the next time you run for office. Interesting. Lindsay, what was what was your favorite takeaway? Go ahead. Well, I think with former Ohio Governor John Kasich yesterday and then with Cindy McCain, I mean, two days ago and Cindy McCain last night, I think it's important that you have these Republicans come out and say their support or why they're supporting Joe Biden. I know that one thing that Cindy McCain was very clear on is that Joe Biden and her husband, the late John McCain, had a very strong relationship for 30 plus years working across the aisle. And I've been telling you guys, I think that's an important stance yes. for Joe Biden to run on. Yes. And that he's just a decent man, right? It's it's really uh, that versus what we have now is the argument that Democrats are trying to make. My favorite moment was Jacqueline Brittany. She formally nominated him and she is a security guard who works in the New York Times elevator. And she said people get in here and go to their meetings. No one looks at me. No one t talks to me. No one notices me. Joe Biden noticed me. She is, he is my friend. He's going to take my story. He's going to go into that meeting and he's going to represent me. And she formally nominated him for the roll call. And I thought that was pretty cool. And that tie was awesome as well. Right? Yeah, good call. I thought it was just, he's one of the people, working people, and I think they did a nice job on that. But let's see what the other side is saying. One person that didn't nominate 
uh, Joe Biden was AOC, and I found that very interesting. She well, said, I'm still going with my Bernie, which was very kind of a little bit crazy at this time. Well, a lot of people said that, but according to convention rules, you do need to nominate anyone that makes the threshold of delegates. So he did need to be nominated, but it's very clear, as Lindsay said, where the progressive side of the Democrats lay, and that is with AOC and Bernie. I completely agree with you. Uh, what does the other side say about day two of the Democratic convention? So here's what some of the Trump campaign had to say in response last night on their YouTube channel. I think we have a real problem here for the Democrat Party. Um, they're not enthusiastic. Their programming isn't enthusiastic. They're running on this socialist platform. I mean, they put out young stars like AOC. She's not even talking about Joe Biden. I mean, they have a real problem with their base. They have a real problem with their party, even though they're running further and further to the left. Okay. Do you think they're right for calling these people out sort of for being losers or are they kind of going against them for I wish we were back to what Lindsay said which is policy what do you think Linz we were debating policy I think everybody's in this new space that they haven't been in and really just trying to figure out how to navigate this I think President Trump plans to go do things actually in person and I know that a lot of the Democrats plan to do things virtually and so watching the whole convention as I told you guys yesterday I think that it's just this new space that we're in yeah. so of course there were like glitches and some of the things that these people that you just show were discussing but like everybody's in this weird space where we don't we're just trying to get information from each of the potential candidates and get it safely. Yeah, yeah. And Lindsay's in a weird space yeah. right I mean, now. You You're not here gallery? on the panel with us. Right. People's children are in a weird space because they are at home. Uh, my daughter in Atlanta tried to go to school the first day. She was the only child in her class. Oh my God. She is now back home. Her uh, younger brother, uh, her my not related to me, but her half brother. I don't know how you say that. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, he went to school and he was one one of two kids in his class. Everybody is in a weird space right now. Parents are in a weird space right now. Uh, talk show hosts are in a weird space right now. The NHL, the NBA is in a weird space right now. We need to get out of this weird space, and there's one way to do it, and it's by social distancing and by, getting, by eradicating this thing. But if we want to keep talking around it, We'll have another year of this. Well, let's talk about that, actually, because we want to know how you all feel about the way the U.S. has responded to the coronavirus pandemic, how we feel we've done. So a new CNN poll shows that nearly seven in 10 Americans say they feel embarrassed. About eight in 10 Americans say they are at least somewhat angry about how things are going in the country today, with nearly 51 percent saying they were, quote, very angry. That Cl means that there was an angry and then somebody wrote in very angry. And they <laughs> were like, so many people are writing letters. very angry. We have to very put another category. Very angry. Strongly <laughs> disagree. Well, clearly people's emotions are running high with many feeling frustrated, including Anderson Cooper. You've got to see this exchange he had on his show with the MyPillow founder, Mike Lindell, who claims that an extract from a top Toxic plant, oleander, is the answer to the virus. Remember, this is not peer-reviewed or scientific, and Anderson wasn't having it. Take a look. So you he gets no. a meeting with the president, and you no, stand that's to make money no, from that's this. How do you sleep Anderson. at night? No to evidence. Save lives. How are you different than a snake oil salesman? You have no medical background. There's no evidence of the substance. You know it you hasn't been Anderson, tested in I've animals or diligence. humans. So Mike Lindell has given a lot of money to the Trump, uh, President Trump's campaign, but also he's on the board of this biotech company that's selling the oleander-like medicine that is not peer-reviewed and is not a cure. I want to make sure we say that. Lindsay, what do you think? How does he sleep at night on his my pillow? <laughs> I think there are a lot of people that have a lot of ideas on how to get rid of COVID and none of them have been proven. I mean, I could list out the things that I've heard, like take this pill or put your head over this thing to get more steam. Like there's so many things that everybody has, but you cannot spew them out when you're overseeing a big tech company or overseeing any type of medical company or on any board. People are following and listening to what you say. And when you have a national platform, you really have to be careful um, about saying some of those things so people can stay safe and so we know for sure. Yes, absolutely. I, I, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I want to have a, a, you know, a really intelligent comment to make, Tori, but I just need to know what's going on with that plant behind Lindsay. It looks like a giant from what's Game the, of Thrones they, slammed they, it against the wall. Excuse me. Look at the excuse what, me. Is, what is that? Excuse me. They, they told me that my background was too boring, so I got a colorful plant. So and you have a murder about this. plant behind you? And, and a Jackson Pollock. <laughs> what is so happening cool. behind Lindsay? Excuse me. It's a it's, this is bigger than a convention. Art. Excuse me. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Final say.
We got it. It's art. Coming up on TVL, <laughs> our medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, is weighing in on the topic of something called herd immunity. She's just going to explain what it is and how to achieve it. Plus, we got Jim Belushi. He's taking people behind the scenes of his new cannabis farm. He tells Jeff what inspired his new reality show. And DBL is new every day solely because our Ooh, co-workers. Nice shot. I know. That looks so good. Look at my legs look so white. Our co-workers are producing <laughs> the show from home. Stay safe, everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back to DBL. With coronavirus news changing all the time, we know it can be hard to keep up. We really do. And that's why we don't just trust Al and Tori. We trust our medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, in a beautiful that's who I trust. fork leaf clover green. I do as well. Now, to make sense of this. Also, that's not a color. Just keep, keep reading, but that's not a color. <laughs> I know. I knew it. I knew it as I said it. Okay. okay I apologize. Doc, I need you to weigh in on this one. It's going to be called herd immunity, and it's H-E-R-D, and I want to get your take since the pandemic hit, I'm trying to get the prompter to roll real quick. Scientists have been trying to figure out uh, how many people in a community must be immune to the virus before it fades out. This is the idea of herd immunity. It's a little hard to explain, so can you explain it easily for us? Uh, it's a complicated concept, Tori, but we can break it down quite simply. So if no one in society is immune to a disease, the disease or the virus spreads very quickly. On the other hand, if many people in society are immune, it actually slows the spread of the virus and the virus peters itself out. Oh. And so you can be immune to the disease just by being part of a herd, even if you yourself don't have immunity, just because those around you have immunity Whoa. and that causes the virus to stop spreading. Yeah. I heard that. Oh, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> but we just, I mean, I'm sure you looked at this story at seven o'clock this morning, like, wait till she hears my herd punch. Shut up, Val. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, so Doc, I have to ask you this, and we've actually gotten this question a million times, so let's uh, get this out there. How would the U.S. achieve herd immunity, and is it possible? 
So Al, there's two ways to achieve herd immunity. The first is people get sick, they recover from the virus, and they have antibodies or immune system response to the virus that then makes them immune from reinfection. The second is vaccination. So people get a vaccination, mount an antibody response, and are then immune from the infection. But in both ways, you have to be immune from the infection in order for herd immunity to work. And enough people in the herd have to have immunity. So that's called a herd immunity threshold. Mm. How many people in the herd have to be immune? So for this virus, they had initially calculated that to be about 60 to 70 percent. But a new paper just came out in the journal Science that says it may be as low as 43 percent for us to achieve herd immunity. Mm. But that's still a lot. So keep in mind, that means 43 percent of the population has to have immunity. Interesting. All right, well, Sweden, I'm, I believe this is right. Sweden tried this. It didn't go perfectly, am I right? Is this a strategy you think works to contain the virus? No, you're absolutely right. Sweden tried it, it was a failed experiment. And using infection to achieve herd immunity is very dangerous, Tori, mm. for two reasons. Number one, millions of people have to die because you have to get the infection and some percentage of people will die from the infection. Wow. The second is even if you achieve infection in whatever 60% of the people for herd immunity, those antibodies have to last. And we're seeing studies that show that they can start fading as soon as one month after infection. So the best way to achieve herd immunity is really through that vaccine. Vaccinating. Do you think we can get 43%? Do you, Doc, think we can get 43% of the population? What would that be, 160 million people, roughly? Not, yeah, yeah. I, yeah no. I'm going to go with that. Yeah. So I, I, I guess, I mean, there's so many people with their own theories, Doc. I mean, I, I wonder, do you feel like there'll be so many people and so many facts that people won't really know where to get their actual information from? We really have to get that you guys because otherwise the vaccine won't even work because that's how vaccines work is by achieving herd immunity so we have to get the word out that that vaccine has to be used in a widespread fashion wow thank you again wonderful wonderful information on herd immunity terrible terrible pun you'll be back <laughs> tomorrow if you have a question about coronavirus you want answered by the doc write us on social media or in uh, email info at dailyblastlive.com we'll be right back Welcome back to DBL. 38 years ago, Jim Belushi lost his legendary brother, John, to a drug overdose. The tragedy inspired Jim to start a cannabis farm in Oregon. Jeff caught up with him earlier to talk about his new reality show, which follows his farming adventures. It premieres tonight. Take a look. 
Jim Belushi, welcome to DBL. I'm a huge fan of yours. For people who don't know, you must be living under a rock. You're an actor, a comedian, singer, musician, and now with 93 <laughs> acres of land in Oregon, you could add farmer to that list. How did you decide what you're gonna do with all that land, Jim? I, I, you know what, I, I bought a little cabin-like place and built a house on the Rogue River in Southern Oregon on like 13 acres. And then the property behind me was an 80 acre farm that was up for sale. So I bought it and then I didn't know what to grow. <laughs> and cannabis became recreational and legal at that moment. I went, well, it's the new agriculture. Let's, let's see what this is all about. It's a lot of marijuana. You recently posted a photo of your late brother, John, on the Belushi Farm Instagram with the caption, if my brother John was a pothead, he'd still be here today. How has his story influenced what you're doing on the I farm right now? I believe that. You know, opiates is a huge crisis. I mean, there, where there are dispensaries, the counties that have dispensaries, the opiate overdoses are down 25%. I mean, it, it, uh, cannabis is a path off of opiates for veterans and overprescribed patients, a path to relieve anxiety, inflammation, sleeplessness, depression, Alzheimer's, even hopelessness. All this is a part of wellness in cannabis, and that is part of the show. Yeah, and I would imagine there's a steep learning curve with this industry, which I'm sure, like you said, we'll get to see on your new show, Growing Belushi. Do you have any stories of farming mishaps that maybe you could share with us right now? That's all the show is about are my mishaps. <laughs> I mean, the learning curve is steep, and I am slipping down this curve, this, just grabbing onto the road trying to hang on. Let me tell you, it's for an actor to become a farmer, uh, it was costly, not only financially, but emotionally, you know, and I learned a lot. You're a farmer now. Does this mean you're done with Hollywood? No, I do both. Why not? One isn't in contrast to the other. Actually, I've married both of them together. I, I'm farming and I film it too. So it, it's I can bring everything I know together. Exactly. Mike Tyson's also a farmer. He's got a he's got a ranch, I think, out in Las Vegas. Would you fight him for title of best farmer? <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> he can have it. <laughs> I thought I'd just throw it in there. Jim Belushi, thank you so much for joining us here on DBL. And for those of you wanting to follow along on Jim's wild ride, tune into Growing Belushi on Discovery. Again, Jim, I can't thank you enough, and go Bears. Go Bears, and thank you for your support. I appreciate it. All right, best of luck to you, Jim. Talk to you soon. We'll be right back, everybody.
Welcome back to DBL. See how I was trying to get my pony in there? Yeah. Growing a garden at home is fun and rewarding, but we know not everyone has the space for it, seriously. That's why I'm here to show you how to make your own mini herb garden using a shoe rack. Here's this week's DBL Home Hack presented by American Home Shield. Hey guys, Tori here for this week's Home Hack. I'm in the DBL backyard and I'm gonna show you how to make a DIY herb garden using an over the door shoe rack. It's easy, it's inexpensive, and it adds that little flair, you know, to your backyard. Let's get to it. Okay, so here's what you need. An over the door shoe rack. You can get these at Walmart or Target, even the dollar store. Then you want some outdoor potting soil. And of course, you wanna pick a few of your favorite herbs. Basil, mint, maybe some rosemary if you're feeling feisty. So the first thing you need to do is make drainage holes like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. These are happy holes, drainage holes. You're gonna fill the holes with some potting soil. Now you get to put your herbs in. So here's a little parsley, sage. Of course, you gotta get your chives. Get your chives on. And of course, a little thyme, because we all need time on our hands. <laughs> when it comes to your home, American Home Shield Warranty helps cover many things homeowners insurance leaves out. Call American Home Shield at 1-800-919-3629 to get a free quote today. It's cute. Yeah. Huh? Mm hmm What are you thinking, really? It was interesting. Wait, what does interesting mean? Say it for real. I, I learned a lot from you stuffing dirt into a shoe <laughs> container. And honestly, that, you know, my girl plants stuff. And Mary would love this. She would love that. Imagine being like, do you, would you want some tomato basil marinara? Let me go to the shoe rack. And you know what? As somebody that had a balcony for a long time, I had apartments, this is the way to go. Totally. Well, I'm glad I racked up that one. DBL is new every day. Did I ruin I it? I hope they heard that. I think we'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Bye, guys. <laughs>